This is Michel. Michel, hi, Max here. And who are you? I um, I'm a human living on planet Earth. Now it's 2018. Nothing huh? changed. Not much changed since then. I see. And what else do we want to know? I just wanted to meet you and chat about astrology and ah. genetics. Mm -hmm. The genetics and astrology and uh, yes. So I wonder, uh, you published your, your research in uh, 55, so you lived for a long time after that and then also you might have learned something interesting after you left the body. Oh yes, uh, there's many things that um, you learn after you leave the planet, of course, and some of these things are very important and interesting. Um, I learned that uh, also when doing these things that your conception is also interesting and important, but no one can measure exactly when conception is, but that time is actually very important to preciseness about many things. But um, it's not necessary for the general astro astrological outlook, but it does bring things into a greater clarity when you're looking at things. So if you know generally what time conception was, you'll even get a greater um, understanding of uh, the horoscope because the movement and of the sky from that point, the nine months, uh, is interesting from that exact point. Now, Having said that, um, it only brings a little bit more clarity because you realize that nine months was the, was the gestation period or whatever you want to call it, the pregnancy time. And, um, and so you have a fair understanding of when it, the child was conceived and so, therefore, it, it only changes the information uh, a little bit. Um, let, let, let me, let me um, come back to conception. I just um, uh, came across the data that um, when the cell starts dividing, basically the first, um, the first uh, zygote cell, when it starts dividing, it... Uh, seems to suck um, the, the chaos out of this environment. Basically, the experiment was that uh, they put a, like a very sensitive camera uh, watching the, uh, the zygote under the microscope. Yes. And trying, trying to capture every photon which comes out of this zygote. Yes. And uh, just because of the noise in the system, because it's so sensitive, it would produce some noise in, the, like some noise in the recording. So you can see lots of uh, blips in 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 the recording, even if there is no photons captured. So when the zygote was um, uh, dividing, for this few minutes, uh, the noise became uh, thirty percent smaller, which is very very significant. Oh yeah. So some, yes. Somehow the zygote normalized or basically ordered, put in order uh, the the sort of environment around it, and uh, that was captured by uh, by recording system. Of course, yes. It is a, a spiritual time. Uh, the spirit, uh, the soul, is entering and buffering out the uh, confusion. So that it might be a pure, uh, a pure spiritual connection. So I wonder how, how why, why would the, what, why would the uh, noise stop? What would be the me mechanics of that? It would be spiritual in nature. It's a spiritual time when the 
the cell divides, the spirit is, has changed the atmosphere. It must be a calm, beautiful thing. It is uh, spiritual. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was thinking also that, you know, it's uh, one of the proofs of, of the spiritual uh, phenomena, which is sort of reproducible. Absolutely. It's a definitely part of uh, what spirit wants to do. He wants to make sure that the, that moment is precious and divine. Another question I had was, um, uh, what is the mechanism, uh, physical mechanism of astrology? Why would the time of birth uh, imprint on, uh, on the body and, how, and then it would imprint on the rest of the life? Why would, uh, how would that would uh, mechanically work? Well, it is like this. The, everything, you understand that gravity affects you no matter how much or how little. And with these things, with uh, astral bodies such as the sun, the moon, the planets, anomalies that are not that far off, they would affect gravitationally <clears throat> the body. And this would be like uh, writing a, writing some um, words right on the soul because it is that they will connect to the individual at that time. The, the child is in a very sensitive condition and this is um, almost saying this is who you are and these gravities are, although they are very slight, they can affect um, the birth, they can affect the life because of how they pull on it and what their meanings is, what their meanings are to the, uh, the, the world and the universe. Sometimes the meanings are misconstrued because they are not universally read, but they are read from a human standpoint but if you were to get them from a more galactic point of view, you would get a much clearer understanding. What is the connection between astrology and flower of life? The flower of life, you see, the flower of life is also affected by all the light, the movement, gravity. Gravity is very important and the distance that the sun is from uh, different things and how intense it is, etc. So therefore, it, the different facets of the flower of life is like the different facets of human condition. They do have some parallels. <clears throat> I see. Um... So, um, why, um, why is the moon important? Um, is the moon artificial? Or how artificial it is? If it were artificial, it would not be able to pull gravity the way it does. It uh -huh. is a solid mass, and therefore it does pull uh, the waters the way it's supposed to pull the waters. You see, people do not take that into consideration. They uh -huh. say... It, it is man-made or whatever, but its density is what actually, the gravity within its own density is what pulls the, the waters of the earth and helps control um, different things of that nature. So even though that it's been hollowed out at some, in some areas, it still has a, a good enough mass to draw the, uh, to its gravity, to draw the waters, etc. Why is the moon, um, what is the expression of the moon? Why is the moon uh, responsible for, what, what do you think the moon is responsible for and why? It is responsible for emotional change. And it is, the reason it is, is because 
man is made of a, a lot of, there's a lot of liquid within man, a lot of water. And the moon can help control how that is moved in the human. And in certain, uh, you know that when the moon is in full, it affects humanity in a greater way because it's pulling on uh, different parts of the body. Now, the emotions are attached to spirit bo and body. So they are affected by what the moon is pulling. If you are in a good frame of mind during that period, it would happen to make you feel even better. If you were not in that great of a frame of mind, then it might make you feel worse. So it does have an effect because it does pull on the, on the system. What is the significance, uh, physical significance of the full moon? It's like, it, uh, the, the fact that it is full just means that the sun is um, basically opposite to the moon on the other side of the earth. So it's, um, is it the light from the moon or is it some kind of uh, distribution of uh, earth magnetic field or earth gravitational field? What is it? There are several things, but first of all, it's the gravit it's gravitational pull. It is the light from the moon also, and it is the, uh, the way that the body is functioning at the time of the full moon. Uh-huh. So that is, it depend, depending on the frame of mind and how the body is functioning, this is the effect that it will have with light and gravity. Now, there are other effects it the gravity can affect other rays of of electromagnetic waves etc but it it's based almost completely on what the state of the body is when the full moon arrives i i'm thinking about astrology and dna and you are thinking about astrology and genes very much you yeah. actually witnessed the progress of molecular biology, so we had a chance to to see the evolution of genetics as well. So I'm looking at the DNA, and I'm wondering how does the DNA, how is the DNA affected by, say, by the moon, by the full moon, by astrology, by the planets? And uh, uh, you did not say DNA. Um, Again, you did not ask me about DNA. That is something different. Um, DNA responds to the moon differently than a full-grown person or whatever. It is part of every human, of course. The DNA is affected uh, by the moon because this is one... Um, the energies pull on the body. You understand that? The uh -huh, DNA... Uh -huh is affected by all these pools and the gravitational uh, pull of the moon. It's also affected by what's, where the body is in its growth cycle. It's also affected by the emotional state that the body is in at that time. So yes, the DNA is affected by the full moon in several different ways. Now, let me tell you why it is affected. Is because the DNA's um, patterns are affected chemically and energetically by the moon. And so they can misfire uh, during a moon cycle if the body is in a certain state of, of disarray thought wise so they can actually send out the wrong uh, signals at times during a full moon because they are sensitive to the energies and the chemicals are and the energies are pulled on the the dna in different ways during a full moon does that make sense to you um 
I understand what you're saying. Okay. So my uh, my um, concern is that some of the DNA is uh, inside the body and it is in, uh, isolated, insulated from the electromagnetic fields by very strong uh, electric charges of the mem cell membrane and nuclear membrane. And there is a lot of electrical activity happening in, inside the nucleus. So uh, the strength of the fields or electric fields of the moon is uh, is very minimal. Even the strength of the magnetic field of Earth is very minimal compared to what we have now, like say from the cell phones, from radio, from Wi-Fi, yes. and from well, microwaves. So it looks like uh, electromagnetics. You forget is, one thing. Uh, if you forget that man has attuned himself to the moon cycles from very early in his existence and believes in moon cycles in his deep psyche that they can do different things and they have uh, an energy on him. The belief system comes into play with this as well, especially with more uh, with more primitive minds, and it does affect uh, the cell system in a, a much greater way because of it. Um, no, that, that I don't buy that. Um, I mean, belief system is cool, but but uh, very often you uh, you are uh, you discover only uh, that you were affected afterwards. Like you look at the horoscope and realize that it makes a lot of sense, but you do, you weren't aware until then. So it wasn't your belief system because you weren't aware. So there is something very fundamental, very physical very mechanistic about the astrology, which is, which goes way beyond the beliefs. Yes, but it is from primitive sources. Uh, it, I mean, it is from elementals, yes, but it's not from the beliefs. I'm not saying that you are aware of your belief systems about this. It is something from the early mankind that is just within you. It is part of who you are. Um, only mankind didn't know astrology on the level we know it now. Uh, only now it is possible to calculate the positions of things using the computer. So you're missing you the point. You're missing the point. Early mankind worshipped the moon. Early mankind had belief systems about the moon that stays in the system forever, behind the chakras or forever. And they are there and they affect mankind even today. That is part of what I'm saying. It has nothing to do with what they believe today or anything about astrology, but their belief systems about the moon were very strong. All right, coming back to the idea of uh, shielding. So the DNA is shielded and yet it seems to be affected by the um, planets a lot. So I'm looking for alternative uh, alternative ways of information transfer, or alternative way of synchronization between the planets and DNA without using electromagnetics. And um, I was um, listening to people who work on quantum mechanics and they all talk about gravity and gravity waves. And apparently the idea is that uh, the ways uh, that the gravity waves or some sort of uh, other fundamental waves are uniting our um, uh, elemental particles and, uh, and uh, these elemental particles are elementary particles, they are somehow linked together even without electromagnetics. Yes, that, I just explained that earlier, that the gravitational uh, the 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 functionality of the DNA is affected by the pull of the moon in its uh, basic functions in some ways, because the ener there are many energies that humans do not know about, and these can be uh, manipulated by some of the functions of the moon. This is just part of what is. Uh-huh. 
So that's what I'm interested in, those energies that uh, penetrate yeah. the shields and still uh, still affect the DNA even though the, the, the even, even through, through the shield. So, so uh, apparently, uh, maybe we're not talking now, now about electrons, but maybe protons and some other elementary particles like uh, neutrons and positrons which are also like in uh, in resonance with uh, with the planet somehow they do yes how do i explain this the the characteristics of the dna at some points work with neutrons positrons protons i mean and um, and they are affected by the way that the emotion at that time. And this can have an effect on the DNA. The, you would not seem to think that the emotional of the human or the physical state would have anything to do with it, but it does. Uh-huh. And so therefore, it depending on the state of mind and or physical health that they are in, it can affect them in different ways. And the, the message that is received by the DNA can be rather confusing because these energies that are not usual to them are introduced and cause interesting reactions. So next question which I have is um, why uh, the planets which are so tiny are still affecting us? Like you know, the moon is close, uh, the sun is huge, the Mars and Venus are close, but other planets are far away and they still are part of our horoscope. Why is that? As I said, when the child is born, even distant uh, gravitational pulls can have an effect on the birth, it's like they are receiving these energies for the first time. You understand they've been enclosed in the mother for the nine months and they have not been exposed directly to the outside world. So therefore, when they are exposed to uh, the third dimension and all the things in it for the first time, everything can have an effect on it, even at far distances. It may not have a great effect at this time, but it is part of the birth history that these energies come to the child. Now, you may say they are distant planets or whatever, but they have their own special energies that they give off and their own amount of gravity. These are all received. The child is extremely sensitive at birth. Uh -huh. I had um, an alternative of explanation that the planet by itself is only a placeholder and um, it reflects the inner workings of the solar system. So basically the energy of the solar systems are primary and at some points there is a, a lot of mass accumulated like there are big planets and uh, in other places uh, the energy doesn't support the mass. So uh, the planet is, uh, grew, grew very small but it's still a, a placeholder for some sort of a vortex or an energy which moves around the solar system. So. So it's more like the solar system is primary, it has its own vibrations, and then the planets are synthesized in some sort of crucial points to indicate where the, how the well, vibrations change. That would, not, that would not be very precise, but the locations of the planets are part of the horoscope. So that is something you must take into consideration because they, they have reached, uh, although what you're saying, I understand there are vortexes and things 
that do affect the child, even that are the unseen portions of the universe can affect the child at that moment. But these things that have position in the sky, that is, their location is important to the birth. Um, is it uh, objective? Can someone uh, meditate and uh, uh, use their willpower to change their horoscope? They can change the direction of their lives and the meaning of the angles that are in the horoscope. They can change the meanings of these planets from the original uh, outcome. You have a, a, a predicted outcome to this light from the horoscopes and from the, the things that ha have been imprinted on the child from the beginning, but you can also find that things can change in that life, energies can change, and they may not be as apt to use some of the energies from the solar system that are available. I got it. Um now, I'm st I started researching the experiments where people take um, mirrors and um, some special fancy mirrors like germanium mirrors uh, and uh, just stick the cells to the mirrors. Like, um, you know, imagine the like embryos, like fish embryos or frog embryos growing or seeds growing and then you show them the mirror and they grow in the presence of the mirror. And uh, they ref uh, the, the waves that they're emitting are reflected back to them, and sometimes the waves are confusing them, uh, and sometimes it's positive and, and very rarely, and often it's negative and sometimes it's positive, like germanium mirror. Germanium mirror seems to be helping the growth and um, lots of other mirrors seem to be inhibiting the growth and actually killing the the embryos yes. so I, I wonder why because if uh, if it is electromagnetic then it would make sense like the embryos ex like emit electromagnetic signals and then the mirrors reflect and confuse them but if it is on the level of um gravity i think the mirrors would uh would have no effect, I think, maybe. There is light reflection in the mirror, one thing, but there are other energies that can be reflected uh, from the mirror into objects, such, uh, and also, if the object is able to see itself in the mirror, that can have an effect, but not as much as the reflection of the energies and the light light reflection can have a great deal of effect with these kinds of uh, things because if you light can be broken into the prisms during reflection as well which is giving them different kinds of energy as well as just the uh, the normal light that they that you might think that they are receiving they're also receiving other kinds of energies. And some of these energies are positive for their growth and others are not. Uh -huh. Thank you, that's, that's yeah, good, good points. Um, yeah, I wonder if there are any uh, non-electromagnetic energies which are also reflected from the mirror. Yes. Maybe some sort of etheric energies or astral energies, something of that sort. Absolutely, yes. There are energies that humanity has not found yet or do not use yet. And they are also part of the DNA because all the energies of the universe are part of life. They have to all be involved in it because God is all energy. Keep that in mind. Uh-huh. Yeah, one of the very interesting experiments is uh, there is a special prism. It's called a uh, quarter cube uh, retro reflector. Uh, trihedro corner cube retro, trihedro corner cube retro reflector. Basically, it's uh, it's three mirrors coming in a in a in a in a 
together like in a corner of a room. And uh, the property of this uh, reflector is that it returns the light, but it turns it around. Like a normal mirror, you look at yourself and your right is on the right and left is on the left. If you look at the corner cube creator reflector, your right will be on the left in the, in the reflection and your left will be on the right. Yeah. And, and like, like, um, like if you're looking at the web camera or something. Yes. And, I... and, and that seems to be like very confusing to the living system. Like normal mirror would have little effect and retro reflector would kill it. And I wonder yeah. why. That is kind of very counterintuitive, and I, I think there, there is some very interesting uh, information for you, which I didn't understand yet. It has to do with the, this dimensional concept. It, uh -huh. it, um, whenever you reflect something in a mirror truly, it is showing you the true reflection of the eye object. Whenever there is an untrue reflection of the object, you uh, inherently know this. And so these are items inherently know that there is something incorrect and cannot continue to move in a proper direction, knowing that as they are growing, uh, they feel that their left side is growing but it appears on the right this is not appropriate and they they find that they cannot survive in in a, in that kind of a deception all right so here is two objections to that explanation uh first uh we're talking to about cells which don't seem to have eyes or perception at but least they, not in not in the common sense not in the common sense no Right, and the second is that uh, it works even if you uh, show one cell to another. Basically, you take two embryos, and uh, in normal situation, you have two embryos, and one basically shines its image on another through certain waves, like say light waves and some other waves. And in the second case, it would shine uh, its image to the second embryo through that retro reflector. So basically, the image would come normally, like the right would be on the right, left on the left. In, in optics, you wouldn't be able to even tell the difference because they look exactly the same. If you show yourself directly or show yourself through a retro reflector, it's the same image. And you're but, saying they still die? And uh, the second embryo would, uh, in normal case, it would, wouldn't care. In the second case, it would, it would die. In the second yeah, so if, it's, if it looks at another embryo through a retro reflector, uh, it would die. And that is, puzzles me. That it couldn't see or know the difference. Say again? You said it cannot see or know the difference. Yeah, it wouldn't see the difference, right. It wouldn't see the difference. It's the same, uh, visually, there's the same image. And how would you explain that? Um, I mean, I have some ideas, but they're kind of vague. So. What is reflection? What is the reflection? They do have a sense of understanding about their being, other they otherwise they cannot exist. You may think that they do not, but there is a a given understanding in their creation that they exist in a certain way, and they do know this. Uh huh. My explanation is kind of trivial. I think that although vis visibly there's a, the, these are the same images, same cells, but I think they're distorted uh, invisibly. Like polarity of the cells of the of the wave polarity of the waves are is uh, distorted when they're reflected, and also I think there are vortexes like vortex waves. They're also called scalar waves, which possibly would be distorted. You you wouldn't be see see it by the eye or by the photograph, but for biology, I think it's very important. So my explanation is the retro reflector just messes up the, the, the spiral waves. Uh, scalar waves are not all, always evident in a reflection. We actually cannot measure them. We don't know anything about them except, you know, their theories. But we don't have any tools for them. Be, they do not have to be um, distorted. Scalar waves do not necessarily distort in a mirror. 
they can be perfect. But um, if they did distort, yes, that might be an explanation. But they do not have to distort. Perhaps it is the kind of mirror that's being used that would, for, that would do that. But I believe that um, whenever they're looking at each other, the two cells, um, I believe that they are, uh, the one that is dying is perceiving something differently altogether. So, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh -huh. I don't believe that it has anything to do with Schuyler waves, but it might have to, to do with um, the inaccuracy of the, the other waves that are being reflected. Yeah, I think it is important. I think the data show that it's important that the retro reflector reflects the waves three times. It's like three mirrors in a row. And um, maybe if we do six mirrors, maybe it will re reverse the effect. I, I, I want to do that experiment. That seems to be pretty simple and logic. The thing is, it may not reverse it either because there might be, with that many more uh, mirrors, there will be some distortion. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, I don't know. But it would be interesting to test. Yes. I believe there will be distortion with that many mirrors. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. uh, well, uh, the last question I had was, um, why would Mercury, what would be the effect of Mercury and why? Mercury is a planet. Uh, Mercury? Mercury is a planet, yes. Oh, what is the effect of it? Uh-huh. You mean on the astrology? On the, on the person. Behavior. Mercury is, the clo Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. And um, it is a small planet. But it still reflects its gravitational pull on the child when it's born. If it is within the area of affectation for the horoscope. Now, it, it may not be in that affectation area at the time of birth. However, it will affect in the sense of its own gravitational pull, the effect if it's in retrograde especially, um, the effects of uh, some of the energies that are around. So why 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 are the retrogrades so efficient? What 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 do this you know? What's the mechanism of retrograde uh, it's easier, action? It's easier to measure it that way. It's actually it it's easier to uh, feel that energy in retrograde than it is any other time. But what's the physical nature of that? Why would uh, something get in? Uh... Because it's pulling against the norm. Like why? Why the? Uh, what, what do you, how do you call it? New moon and waxing moon, right? It's like growing moon and waxing moon. Why are they different? They, they, they have different energies uh, because of how they are, how they are being presented. Like when, like growing moon sort of helps the starting things and. Uh, Yes. Uh, expanding them and then uh, retrograde moon or how the waxing moon helps you to finish them or kind of closes the stuff. Why is that? It, Physically, it makes little sense. I mean, there need, should be some mechanism which I don't it, understand yet. It's very true that it's, it makes little sense, but there are different energy in the way in these, in these uh, different uh, positions. That's all I can tell you at this time because otherwise it would have to go into a deep scientific explanation of the different energies and some of these energies you are not even aware of. But there is a different energy uh, pattern. Uh huh. And that um, is the simple mm -hmm. explanation. 
So why is Mars and Pisces so um, so um, different? Uh, the, the story is that Mars and Pisces makes a person less capable of um, of doing the work, and they are very uh, depend on their mood and their um, uh, completion of the work. Can you explain that? What's the physical mechanism of that? I do not know. Uh huh. Yeah, neither do I. It's sort of like there are rules which kind of work, but I mean, it's really hard to explain why it works. There are rules. It's all about the different energies. I can tell you that. But I do not know. I have not looked into that. I wonder after the death, is astrology still working? Uh, in the afterlife, um, yes, to some degree. I did not hear that. Uh, it, yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, is astrology still working in the afterlife? Yes, it is in some of, in some ways, but we, remember, you have to remember that you've had more than one life, and so which astrology are you looking at? But it's the late last astrology that when you come to the Oversoul or go to wherever you're going, um, it is the last uh, astrology that stays with you. Um, there is a, I just learned, I don't know if it's true, but uh, is it right that next incarnation takes the next uh, zodiac um, sign? So basically if you are born as an Aries, your next incarnation would be uh, Gemini and then the next incarnation would be Cancer, is it right? Not necessarily, no. You can be born out of the cycle, but it is um, because of your purpose in the next life where you will be born in what, in what astrology side. It will be born to help you with your next set of uh, tasks. But is it that the tasks are kind of, is there a correlation? Basically, that the more you develop, then closer you are to the Pisces, and the less developed you are, the closer to Aries. Yes, but you don't have to necessarily go in order on on the wheel of the astrology. You see that there are stars and loops and different things. You can go in different sequences. Uh -huh, I see. That's all I have so far, but thank you very much. It was uh, nice to meet you and nice to, con uh, to discuss the things on that level. I don't know anyone else who is capable of discussing the, uh, the DNA and the, and, the, and the biology and astrology. Well, what, it's what, rare. what humanity needs to learn is what other energies are involved at this point. That is the next step in your understanding. Yeah, the quantum physics sort of develops pretty fast. So there are some theories about energies, but experimental things didn't catch up with biology. Basically, these are independent and in, in not very connected uh, areas of knowledge. And quantum physics and biology. Quantum yeah. biology is postulated, but it's not well, well popular yet and not well studied yet. Well, it's and it's um, hit and miss on some of their theories. I agree. So they are not uh, capable of a strong basis in this area yet. Uh huh. Uh, thank you very much. I would invite um, next uh, next contact. Um, uh, I, I would like to talk to maybe Marsha if she is available. She is. Oh, wonderful! Thank you. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you for the conversation. You're welcome.